I used to dream, militant dreams, of taking over America to show these white folks how it should be done. I used to dream radical dreams of blowing everyone away with my perceptive powers of correct analysis. I even used to think I'd be the one to stop the riot and negotiate the peace. Then I awoke and dug that if I dreamed natural dreams of being a natural woman, doing what a woman does when she is natural, I would have a revolution. There's two things I'm always mistaken for, an Afrocentric and a black nationalist, because I deeply espouse so much of both, but I'm a womanist. I am not able to completely embrace black nationalism because it is so masculine, uh, so male identified. The leaders of them, many of them, if you name one, I know him personally. My thing is that we have a, we are half of God. If there is a God, then men are one half and we're the other half. And we cannot have a situation where we're basically going to have this utopian society where now blackness is the thing, but we are going to be in the mule position still. That is what I cannot accept about black nationalism. They still want us to be this mule who is at their beck and call their command. The only way the problem can be solved, first, the white man and the black man have to be able to sit down at the same table. The white man has to feel free to speak his mind without hurting the feelings of that Negro. And the so-called Negro has to feel free to speak his mind without hurting the feelings of the white man. Then they can bring the issues that are under the rug out on top of the table and take an intelligent approach to get the problem solved. That's the only way that they'll ever do it. Uh, plan to teach the people uh, the strategy and the necessary tools to liberate themselves. No more brothers in jail. Off the the pigs are gonna catch hell. Off the no more brothers in jail. Off the are gonna catch hell. You know, the struggle between men and women for people of African descent who were formerly slaves whose, whose ancestors were slaves cannot be the same struggles as the feminist movement. I, I think that the conflict between Black Panther women and the feminist movement in general, the white feminist movement, were a reflection of the conflict between the classes of women. The fact is, in 1976, 60% of black youth could not find a child. And you talk about black women, hey. Women want to be productive citizens, women particularly who have to take care of their families. They don't want public assistance. They want to be able to go out and work, be able to pay their taxes so that they can be considered productive citizens. But if you don't have child care centers, you have all of these women who have to support their families going back on the public assistance road. Thousands of women in America are not working because of the need for additional luxury. They're working because it's a necessity, and if we believe in our children, and we want to give our children the best, since we say we're a child-oriented society, we should develop the kind of national child care centers in this country that's desperately needed. I don't know that I've ever faced discrimination as a woman, as yet. And I think that's because the racial situation in America makes most black women face discrimination as black. I don't think that uh, the movement is as relevant to the needs of, of uh, poor women and minority women as it should be, probably because uh, the movement is mostly composed of middle class women who are naturally concerned with the issues that affect their lives. I mean, w when we look at the history of slavery, we have a whole situation where no one cared if you were a woman or not. You had to get out into the field. Or after freedom, no one cared whether you were a woman or not. You had to work to support your, uh, your family. So black women, that's one of the problems that women live has, I think, in, in related to the black woman, they, they look at themselves as women, but uh, we've had to look at ourselves as black. The issue of equality for us is not even, we're not even there yet on things like man-woman treatment. We're on just being considered a woman in many women's cases. Now, some people watching this interview will say, well, she's very attractive, or will think, some may not, but I'm saying they will say, why is she complaining? She looks good. 
but that's not my job. My job is to speak on behalf of all black women who I feel uh, when they bring up a term like black women, that includes all, or a wide range of women who don't have the, the looks or the whatever that it's accessible to be heard, to have power. And Americans often are not honest about that, that so much of a woman's power in America, no matter where you go, even in a feminist movement, has to do with how you look and are presented and you know, all these different things. And I find going around the country dealing with black women is that many times black women are, like I just said, not even considered women by certain people who have power. Uh, so they're not looking to have you be in that panel with them. They're not looking to have a place for you, per se. They want to, a lot of people think that feeling sorry for us is justice. You know, I have a lot of women that I argue with, with who I'm like, no. You feel sorry for black women and you think that's enough. You're not offering us to come into the door and actually be a competitor or and black women should be because we are women. In many African societies, the ones I know best, we had in fact more collaboration between the sexes, uh, even though there are defined roles like for instance sometimes in the case of certain, certainly circumcision and uh, you know there were certain activities that were in the men's sphere and in the women's sphere. So that um, I think this idea of the notion of sexism, which is in fact a very contemporary, uh, you know, uh, Western uh, idea of, you know, um, gender roles, which many African specialists, especially African wo um, women scholars who, who are uh, in Africa, based in Africa, and even the women scholars who are uh, of African descent who come to America or come to the West to study, and some of them do study, um, you know, gender issues, um, they would in fact take exception to some of the terms like, you know, sexism. We're going to keep being bastardized, confused separated, divided, everything. Because it all starts, a, a nation cannot rise above its woman.